We're going to start from uh, where the point of beginning of Moorish science should start. And that's with the missing keys of our culture in terms of the kind of miseducation and misdirection that the colored Negro American has been given uh, that is very much a part of the confusion of black life. Uh, is to clarify what's missing. The three missing keys are identity, self-knowledge, and self-revelation. With those three keys, your personal and impersonal world will begin to make much more sense than without them. It doesn't matter what one's religious beliefs are. That has been a major problem in the divisionism among black folks. It is being able to identify the person in your mirror that is essentially the problem, as well as the clarity. So what we're trying to do is to clarify who we are, what we are, and where we are. And that point of identity is that of knowing historically, biblically, and lexiconographically that is, by dictionary, the point of an issue of, and the fact of, being Moors. This is ethnocentric identity, not nationality identity. It can become nationality identity, as uh, the founder of the Moorish Science Temple first implied. His reasons for that uh, could be viewed during the period in which he was teaching and prophet, prophet, prophesizing uh, as opposed to <clears throat> academic accuracy. The, the need for nationhood seemed to be more relevant than the clarity of identity. The, the idea of ethnocentric is what your mama makes is ethnocentric, that is blood, genetics, chemistry. That is ethnocentric. Wherever dark skin, broad nose, thick lip, broad nose, furled haired human beings are, they are Moors, which supersedes nationality. If it's in Britain with those descriptors, that's a Moor. If it is in Spain, Africa, Asia, China, it doesn't matter, okay? Their nationality is based essentially on the civic registration where they are located. I want to make that point clear because we're dealing with the fact of rather than the preference of, okay? Ge geography gets to be a matter of preference. In other words, if you move to Russia next week and started speaking Russian and signed your civic right over to the Russian government, you, you're then a Russian more, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but wherever you move, you can't change more. <laughs> Let me point it, put it that way. So the, the point of name is the, the, the fact of clarity of identity. There's an old, quote, Egyptian proverb, he who has no name does not exist. And the rationale of that is that name equates with nature, function, ability, talents, power. Okay? That's the significance and meaning of name. Why God has so many names in everybody's scripture is because God has so much power. Name also reflects power and the kinds of power. We'll get to that in a moment concerning those names in the many scriptures. But the point of beginning, of motif, central theme of study, does not, will not, cannot, need not change between now until you kick open your box to climb in to leave here. It is still you that you should study and should know. Man, know thyself, and to thine own self be true. That's not biblical. That comes from your ancestral uh, body of cultural knowledge. Man, know thyself. 
and you will know the gods and the universe was written on the temple walls of Dendera, one of the ancient lodges of the ancient Moors. Lord of the earth is the meaning of more. It is in the Bible. In Revelations chapter 5 verse 11. But it is not given as a person. Though it appears to be a person. It is given in its symbological meaning. That represents what we are going to discuss today. When we get into Gemini. It is also in reference to what is called retranslating in the genealogy of Ham who is Cam not Ham who is not Cam but Camur in the full name or registration of the name of Ham one of his descendants is Misraim this is Morse in some Bibles of today, they replace the concept the Hebrew spelling of so-called Moors. And in one Bible I found where they simply gave this abbreviation for Egypt. In Harper's uh, uh, Biblical Encyclopedia, you, Epedia, you will find a synonymic exchange of Egypt for Misraim. Okay. Lord of the earth is not given directly except in reference to, in the commandment to Noah, he is to do what? Man is to do what? Any of you good Christians know? What is the commandment is man is to take what? To take what of the earth? To take dominion of the earth. Okay. The earth that is referring to in the metaphysical view is not the physical planet earth, but your body is the earth. You're to take dominion of your own earth, your own body. To do that, you must be master of your physical, biochemical, and psychological body form. The direct functionality of human nature insists that you master it. Otherwise, some part of your own nature will compel you to behave compulsively. That is what we are seeing in the world. Those who have no power over their own glands, over the fire of their own blood, over the very waters of their own chemistry, over the very hot breath of their own air, <laughs> and virtually have no control over their own muscle and bone. If I can provoke you to such anger and rage that you would strike me dead, you had no control over your own muscle and bone. That is not a master. That is a slave to impulse, to compulsion. The four elements of nature, the four elements of the earth, the four elements of human nature as well as natural nature. I can't say forest nature because I'm still omitting the oceans and other waters. The reference again goes from this concept of Lord of the Earth to identity. Who you are and what you are is found in John chapter 10 verses 31 to 36. We're providing the evidence now. I'm not taking you to Sunday school or back to Christianity, but clarifying the difference between knowledge, which is in the Bible, which is something you're supposed to know. Your religion is something you're supposed to believe. They are not one and same thing. They are two different things. <laughs> okay. John 10, 31, 36 is an argument between Jesus and the Pharisees or Sadducees, whatever, 
They were Negroes. We're pretty sure of that, Ethiopians. I have shown you many good works, and for which of these good works do you stone me? And the response is, we stone you not for good works, but you, being a man, make yourself out to be God. And Jesus' reply is, does not your scriptures say that ye are gods? And if your scriptures so read, they cannot be changed. The scripture he's referring to, or is being referred to, is found in Psalm 82, verses 5 to 8. They go on in darkness, knowing nothing. Did I not tell you that ye are gods, children of the Most High? Yet you shall die like men, you shall, yet you shall die like both men and princes. Okay. We look at the concept rather than at the belief of G O D, which is not a Hebrew word or Syriac word or Arabic word or old ancient word. This is a code word okay, that comes from the word in the German language of all places Gut, which means good. All the Kabbalist or Kabbalistic writers, the ones who formed the scriptures did was took out one O to get the code for I'm going to abbreviate these. Generator, that's your brain. Operator, that's you, self or soul. Destroyer, that's the sacral vertebrae at the very end of your vertebrae where the kudalini, the coiled serpent, and the fire, the cosmic fire, is and rises up when you have access to brain soul and kudalini the cosmic fire you then are god okay. but you're not infinity <laughs> you're not the creator okay you're not lord over everybody you're lord over yourself okay it, it, I, I found need to make that clarity. Some brothers were not here. I am God. I have come to save all. Well, wait a minute. And brother read two books. So keep the ego out of there because the ego wants your power. It must grab hold of that which is permanent so that it can stay here. The ego is the beast. The beast who was and is and yet is not. <laughs> the only thing in your nature that has no root in nature is the human ego. And brother, we are seeing the beast perform like it has never performed before. <laughs> oh Lord. And some of the most hideous behavior in terms of the kinds of murderous deaths that are taking place. The, the behavior of human beings makes the devil look like Santa Claus. So we go on with the code in terms of how it further explains and expresses itself. The code we're talking about is the Codex Inscriptus found in the Bible, the dictionary in lexiconographic words, and in esoteric schools of thoughts that keep the secret, in schools of thought that keep the secret, the Masonic order, the Eastern Star order, and other such esoteric Eurocentric orders essentially, based upon Moorish science. As strange as that might seem or sound, as you go further into study, as we will into Masonic symbology, it'll come to verify itself. That is not Arabic. <laughs> That's English. Okay?
arm, leg, leg, arm, head. That's what A-L-L-A-H means. That is not Aleph, Lam, Lam, Hamza. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It, it's, understand the translation. The youngest language on the planet is English. It has become the pocket, the building blocks for the advanced or evolved codex and scriptus for a universal purpose. The only order on this planet that is universal is the Masonic order. It's the only one. The Catholics are not everywhere. Muslims are not everywhere. Jehovah's Witnesses are not everywhere. But the Masons are everywhere. In every ethnic group on the planet, there's a Masonic order. This is essentially a given code. Is that being shown? Can that be seen on? Okay. Yeah. Good, okay. Okay. But in cultural artifice reality, this is Moorish under the auspices of, quote, Egyptian. Islam does not have a crescent and star emblem in its book or on its book. Islam rejects symbology as idolatry. That's why we know the crescent and the star is not a Muslim symbol. It was used and is still being used as a governmental symbol of the countries that are essentially Arabic. This is a Moorish symbol crescent and star. As we look back into the knowledge of self and the knowledge of the universe and the knowledge of God, we come to understand symbology as a part of the cultural legacy of the dark-skinned, broad-nosed, thick-lipped, and furled-haired human being that was cut off by the ordeal of slavery. Notice I did not say the history of, but the ordeal of. Nature makes the crescent and the star. There is no five-pointed star in the heavens. There's a four, eight, 16, and even a seven-point. There is no crescent moon in the heavens. That is the appearance of a portion of the moon as the moon passes between the sun and earth. It is the drawing of nature that presents us with the perfect silhouette of a crescent. The crescent represents cancer, the mother. The five-pointed star represents man first who is the sun thereby structuring my sun which is what right okay mother and son crescent and star nature though it is mentioned in Quran in chapter 70 Jesus and Miriam are given as a sign. Okay. We know that Jesus does not come with his father, who's in heaven. He only comes with and through his mother, mother and son. The Codex Inscriptus, the knowledge and the keys of Moorish science, the language of symbolism, the secret language, is the base of the Bible the base of all major scriptures. By major, I mean those that are, have made an impact on the largest population of human beings on the planet. There are other scriptures that are not being used by any religion at all, but are still considered holy writ. The crescent and star is I of the letter. 
and of the third eye. The pyramid, the perfect building in its geometrical structure and form with the raised, pure, the raised third eye <coughs> that you can find on the back of the dollar bill is self. The right angle, the compass, excuse me, the square, and the compass are the tools of the measuring, the measure of the fullness of the statue of Christ, not Jesus. Divine nature is what gres, gares means. The kinetic word, Christos, and is Christ, is the translation of gres in the quote so-called Egyptian is law. The law of or the inverted triangle the law of correspondence as above so below as within so without the law of correspondence, the basis of that which exists in one place reflects itself in another. That which is in heaven is reflected on earth. That which is in your brain is reflected in your body. The law of correspondence is the am or amness, I amness of divine nature. The M is the circle and the cross, the tools of the measuring of all things, which symbolically represents mastership. Thirty-three Anna. Thirty-three and a, and a third. The third is the other aspect of the Masonic order. How much is three and three and three? Nine. How much is four times nine? Thank you. The full circle of 360 degrees is master. I self law and master is the meaning of the codex in scriptus Islam. So when you hear a Moor who's knowledgeable say Islam, he's not saying peace. He shouldn't be talking about some organization. He should be greeting you as recognizing your divinity. That's its purpose as a salute to your godhood and your brother or and sisterhood. We won't get into the double numbers there at this point. Okay. The Ankh, the symbol of everlasting life, of life, is found where? Anybody know? In its natural form, where is this symbol found? Well, somewhere in that area, but specifically where? On the up, upper wall of the uterus of the female, tied in a knot natural symbol, again, nature producing, your ancestors discovering. When you close this structure, as the Ethiopian did, you have the cross. Okay. It is also the symbol of the planet Venus in astrological glyphics. This science, this knowledge that is written in nature is called now in this language symbology. I don't have the glyphs, I won't try to 
write it. The ancient word, but it can be found in uh, uh, Yosef Ben Yakanan's book, Africa, the Mother of Western Civilization, the hieroglyphic for Sim, <laughs> which is uh, the drawing of the representation of an image on the ground. We recall those who heard the story from Reverend Biscuit. Jesus kneeled on the ground and drew, or Jesus kneeled and then drew on the ground one or the other as a symbolic representation of a particular art form. That's, in that little gesture is the whole meaning of the art and science of symbolism. Okay. How many numbers are there? Somebody, help me. I can't hear you. You don't. I hear somebody. Oh no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There are nine numbers, and you do know that. You're just not paying attention to what you already know. How many books are there in the uh, Old Testament? Excuse me. How many names are there of God in the Old Testament? Anybody, any biblical scholars here? I won't hesitate. There were 72 names. There were. They took them all out and put Lord. In the Quran, how many names are there? In the Bhagavad Gita, how many names are there? What do those number of names have in common? Nine. Thank you. Therefore, we have the key to the code of the scriptures that contain the knowledge of self throughout. In other words, the string that runs through the pearl of wisdom found beneath the belief systems and the different cultural names of the various god or gods. Each name representing a attribute or power or ability of divine nature, not of some one being. Whoever acquires these qualities, traits, becomes God, almighty God, great God, As we understand this concept, God, let me erase this here. I'm getting, getting messy here. Law equals what? I should have wrote the other way. These are synonyms. Law and Lord are one and same. He who embodies the law becomes the Lord. Again, you become your own Lord, not someone else's. Okay. How many planets are there in this solar system? Right? <laughs> well, they just found Vulcan, so they're expanding it. They are expanding it. We're talking about the system that keeps determining the order of things, mapped out by your ancestors. There are 14 constellations in our universe, but 12 are called out. There were 14 disciples for Jesus. One he fired and hired another one. That makes 14. But 12 are called out. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're seeing the mathematics of God. The mathematics of divine order is what we're talking about. Okay. There probably, theoretically, as mentioned by others who deal with this science, report that there are 12 planets in our solar system. But we're not being affected or influenced by them. And the one they're talking about on this devastating far end of our system is cold and icy. I don't know what the hell this is going to be doing. 
Vulcan, it's referred to as. There's also another one called Chiron that they have not, the astronomers have not acknowledged. Astronomy and astrology are not the same sciences. Okay? The astronomer is not interested in the intelligence of the planets, but in the position and size and speed and distance thereof until it gets close to the atmosphere and then they, they get scared. They could have called a hale Bapa planet, as big as that comet is. A tail span of a, over, what, three million damn miles. It's amazing for a piece of rock <laughs> flying through space. <laughs> okay, that's the part of the Codex Inscriptus that we're going to deal with at this point. We already know how many degrees in a circle, and of course, you sisters already know how many months it takes to give childbirth, right? So we understand this again, this science of nature. Man does not determine nine months, nature does. So man is simply following the edicts of nature, as nature has itself in divine order and stays in order. It's changed. It used to be 12. The cycle was 12 for... Used months. to be 12 what? 12, 12 months. Well, I see, we can't, we can't vouch for that. That's, yeah. that's an interesting theory, but Mama keeps doing it in nine. Right. Okay, so we have to go along with Mama. The hell with what the brother thinks. No, <laughs> he ain't doing it. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate your comments. Yeah. Well, it also used to be that the, the, the natural process was to keep producing twins. You know, and triplets and quadruplets. You know, that used to be the natural process. In fact, most of the sons of the old ones, Noah and Abraham and Jacob, produced twins. You know. But uh, uh, that, that seems to be. About, uh, people over in other countries still producing children. I mean, women at age sixty. I don't know. That's a good question. I, I've heard of they such. Don't have yeah. I, I don't know. But, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. One of the things uh, that the yogi mistresses refer to the problem of difficult menopause, or not menopause, menstruation, is the fact that women are eating meat. Yes. And that when they abstain from wheat, the headaches and the cramps and all the other stuff goes away or depreciates to a uh, tolerable level. Uh, so. You ladies want to try that? Well, I, I, you know, whatever point uh, you get to, at some point you, you you get to a certain point you just don't want any meat. Mm -hmm. yeah, this one. Yeah. That's the best way to outgrow it rather than fighting it, you know. Okay, we're looking at the man, the grand man. Actually, we should be looking at the grand woman because she is the one who produces the man. But we're looking at the physiology of human being from the male point or perspective in terms of what we are. and we looked at Taurus. We're looking at the covering of the coat of skin over the invisible spiritual form. And we're looking at the spiritual form or those parts of the physical body that correspond with the astral body and the power that works through the astral body. If I was, ah uh, yes, I was wise enough to do that. No, 
Oh, thank you much. <laughs> I pre certainly appreciate that. Want to zoom in on these there more, man? We talked about Ares, the head, who is Ged of the 12 tribes of Israel. The first point we pointed out is that if you count the sons of Jacob, you will discover that there are 13 sons of Jacob, not 12. How can that be? <laughs> Easy, because there are no sons of Jacob. Jacob is a symbolical representation of 12 personalities that we keep meeting every day in different aspects of these 12 anywhere on planet Earth. They are the only 12 people on planet Earth. One of the reasons why it is wise and helpful to get to know this knowledge of astrology as mapped out by your ancient parents over expectantly or suspectedly a period of 100,000 years or 40,000 years. We don't know which one is correct, but there are such records that take it beyond Europe most assuredly, who tried to give the impression that the Ethiopian, the Hindu, did not know anything about astrology until the British invaded India. Oh well, let's not get off on that one. What we're looking at is found in a book, or two books, one titled The Twelve Powers of Man, which I recommend for every American Negro colored person who is trying to become something other than a Negro colored person. And also, The Healing Secrets of the Ages by Catherine Ponder, which is where you will find these pictographics and a, a reasonable explanation of these glands and their meaning. Not as clear as I will give them, of course. Of course, I have the advantage being able to work with both astrology and uh, physiology uh, supersedes what Charles Fillmore is doing in his or had done in his work but a uh, very helpful work indeed let me put those down there they had Gad the son one of the sons of uh, Jacob which is equated with Aries which is the head which is where Godhood really happens first. Okay, the word head and hood are synonyms. Childhood, boy, girl, hood, man, woman, hood leads to Godhood, Godhead, <laughs> okay, that's Aries. Then we move to Taurus, the throat, the throat chakra or throat center, the power of the spoken word is who? In the 12 sons of Jacob, my dear. My, my, my. Asher is Taurus, and it, 
the secret is found not in the sign or even in the symbol given by the astrologer, but by the two. Asher is Asaroth, is, Asar, is Asara, Asaruth, which is the symbol of Venus. Taurus is governed by Venus. Taurus is a feminine sign. Okay. Without that information about Asher, one can misplace the symbolic representation of Asher in relationship to the throat center. Okay. Or who Taurus is in biblical codex in scriptus. The tape is available if you would like to have that information. The next sign is Gemini. And Gemini is given as, anybody know? Would like to take a shot at it. <laughs> well, well, that's the, one of the plate near there. What son of Jacob is Gemini? Can you hear yourselves talking? Because I can't. I'm thinking. Oh, you're thinking out loud. Okay, well, your, your, your thinking is well-founded. It is Simon or Simeon and Levi, which is one. The key is that's not two people, but twin, which is what Gemini is a symbolic representation of. That's why there are only 12 instead of 13 sons of Jacob. Then when you look at the 12 tribes of Israel in the book of Revelation, Levi is missing. <laughs> then when you look at, as we will in a minute, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 33, Levi is not mentioned. <laughs> okay, we're getting ready to do that now. So that we see this code, we see this set pattern structured by those who were inspired of God. They were called Kabbalists, and one of them, as Brother Browder points out, was perhaps Shakespeare, because that's his language, thou, thine, thus, and thou, that is not God's language. Even though the brothers still try to pray, oh Lord, thou, if thine, and if the all of it. Damn as if the universe does not speak English. You know, but that's the problem of adolescency in things spiritual. The black minister is simply copying his teacher, the white minister. He's not questioning anything that the white boy said about this book. This is the book, you are now the Lord's servant. Go out and preach the word. And half of them out there on the street can't even pronounce it. One-tenth of the words in the damn book. Let alone know what they mean. Yeah. But that's belief. See? We're talking about knowledge. We're talking about knowing the truth. And the truth, when you know it, sets you free from doubt, fear, ignorance, mistakes, and weakness. And thereby, eventually, will set you free of death, poverty, and disease by knowledge, because knowledge is, what is knowledge? All right, it's power. Yes, it's truth, because truth is power, and power is. Knowledge is power, and we're looking for power. With a desperation, we are looking for power. <laughs> Because what we're finding out, those who don't have any, really gets chewed up in the washing machine. Man gets out of his car to go to get a pack of cigarettes, and somebody takes his life for two damn dollars. That's powerlessness. Something should have told him, don't go to that store. If he had any power, any guidance, any insight. Yes, ma'am. Um, could you repeat the name of uh, Gemini? I mean, the, the, the name of the son of Jacob. Simon or S Simeon 
and Levi, the twins. Is it S-I or S-E? Let me look here. S-I-M. S-I-M-E-O-N. Simon and Levi. Turn to Genesis chapter 49. We are supposed to bring a Biblos Holios with us in this class so that we can study. Okay? So those who do not have one, be sure to bring one next Friday if you feel inspired to come back. Okay, uh, Genesis chapter 49, verse uh, 5, I think. Verse 5. Genesis 49, verse 5. You got it, my sister? You want to read it? She didn't even go get her Bible, and I just got it. Thank you for reaching down there by your foot <laughs> and picking it up, Leo. God bless you. <laughs> I'll read it. Simon or Simeon and Levi or brethren, instruments of cruelty, are in their habitations. O my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly, mine honor. Be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. <laughs> I love this stuff. <laughs> uh, what does yours say in that last verse? Verse 5. Genesis chapter 49, verse 5. And what does yours say? Did yours say dig down a wall or not? Now, okay, the reason I ask that is because in the translation of the American version translation in Genesis chapter 49, listen to this. Simon and Levi are brothers. Their swords are implements of violence. Let my soul not enter into their counsel. Let not my glory be united with their assembly. Because in their anger they slew men, and in their self-will they lamed oxen. <laughs> I love this stuff. <laughs> what in the world are they talking about? And, and that, you know, like stuff like that stays on my mind. I'm laying in the bed. What the hell does that mean? What mean? That's just the way my head is put on. Okay, let's look at this apparent mystery. Where's my eraser? Oh, okay. Before we look at it, though, we should know what Gemini is, what Gemini rules, and where Gemini is located in the grand man. What does Gemini govern? What part of our physiological structure does Gemini govern? Anybody know? Nope, don't guess. If, if you don't know, you don't know, huh? Well, that's one part of it. Very good. Now, before I do that, what I should do is turn to the other interpretive blessing of the 12 sons of Jacob, which is found in Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Now, I want you all to go home between now and Friday and read these verses, read the whole chapter, it's not long, so that you get a more comprehensive appreciation of these symbolic representations, okay? Now my brother, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to borrow a piece of paper and pencil and write this stuff down so that you're not sitting there with your arms folded like you're attending a, a, a concert. This is a class. Somebody? Oh, okay, all right, okay, all right. Uh, you all know you're going to have a Moorish inquiry at the end of this. Okay, it's, it's not a test. It's an inquiry as to what do you know is the inquiry. So it's important to keep notes. Okay, it helps to have videos, but it's important to keep notes. Because if you just get 12 tapes, you're going to do a lot of tape rewinding. But if you've got notes, it is easy to turn the page as you make references to and back to. It is not in that little pamphlet, my dear. They don't have it right in there. And that's what I'm going to pr 
prove and verify here. Uh, Deuteronomy 33, uh, verse... Hold on just a momento. Let me look at my notes here. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, verse 8. Okay, thank you. I was on the wrong page. Thank you very kindly. Verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 8. And if you note, Simon or Simeon is not there. And of Levi, he said... Now, this is the blessing of Moses upon the twelve sons or tribes of Jacob. Okay? Let thy thumim and thy urim be for thy godly man. That is what replaces the twins in terms of two aspects. Okay? Whom thou didst prove at Massa with whom thou didst contend at the waters of Mirabah, or Mirabah, who said of his father and his mother, who's the father and the mother of the Zodiac? Anybody? Who's the father and the mother in the Zodiac? The son is what? Ra is who? Yes, his father. Moon is who? Mother. Thank you. All right, we're talking symbolic language as etched out by nature. Okay? Yes, yes dear? Is the sun. Yes. Uh -huh. That's why Jesus can say he's the father and the son because they are one and the same. I did not, now I'm not talking S-O-N, I'm talking S-U-N, okay, all right, okay, all right, very good. I did not, he said of the father, of his father and his mother, I did not consider them, and he did not acknowledge his brothers, nor did he regard his own sons, for well, they observed thy word and kept thy covenant. They shall teach thine ordinance to Jacob and thy law to Israel. They shall put incense before thee and hold burnt offerings on thine altar. O Lord, bless his substance and accept the work of his hands. There are the keys. Not all of them, but some of them. Now we can backtrack, but first we want to clarify that Gemini governs any Geminis in here? One who's Gemini. Very good. Governs the nervous system. Okay. Now, listen to this other key here, since we have that bit of information. In chapter 49, verse 12. No, it's not. It's, it's found in the same one. We just got the reading as we go further here. Genesis chapter 49, verse 7. Cursed be their anger, for it was furious, and their wrath, for it was cool. I will divide them in Jacob. I will scatter them in Israel. Okay. Now, how many parts are there to the nervous system? Name the two parts of the nervous system. That's all you have to do to find out how many. The, auto uh, the autonomous and the sympathetic. Two parts. And they are already divided. One is on your right side, and one is on your left. 
and I shall scatter them in Israel. Where does the nervous system begin? Where does it end? Very good. Okay. All right. You following me here? Because we're demystifying all this stuff. Okay. That's the nervous system that is both divided in Jacob, the physical body, and scattered throughout Israel, the spiritual body. Okay? Why Jacob and Israel are both mentioned. Therefore, why Jacob becomes Israel. Okay? One is physical, the other is spiritual. Okay? Follow me? That's far? Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, let's turn to the Metaphysical Dictionary. If you're going to be a student of yourself, you're going to need a copy of this book, which we do not have any more copies of, and my sister brought with her this time. Bless her heart. <laughs> so turn to page 401 first. We find the word Levi. You want to read that to Forrest, dear? All right, hold it right there for a moment, okay? That's the descriptive definitive of Levi, okay? Th these are twins, okay? Here is the glyphic of Gemini. Joined, twined, which means that they are not two, but one, <laughs> okay? Why we have though two names, but one person. Okay? All right, go on. Third son of Jacob by Leah. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. Genesis 29, verse 29. Okay, let's jump over that and go right to the metaphysical meaning. First of all, Fillmore ducks and dodges the astrological. Okay? He only allows the hint of because he was dealing with the theo philosophical knowledge, not the deeper meaning, clarified meaning of these names in relationship to the science that they were propagated for. Okay? In other words, the twelve sons did not pre-exist the science. The science pre-exists the twelve names of. So they are built, the names are built around the science. That's the work of the Kabbalistic writers, is to take knowledge and legislate it as allegory, story form, parable, symbolic representation in terms of imagery and its hidden meaning thereby giving it a exoteric, visible meaning as it is acted and dramatized out or peopled out, okay? And, and though Fillmore infers throughout this dictionary the, the reality of astrology, he never acknowledges it as a valid science in the scriptures. Okay, okay, he only hints at it. You know, okay. In fact, he even gives some names that uh, most astrologers were not even aware meant astrology. As, uh, one is Mazaroth, which most preachers thought was a monster. 
and it represents the, the constellations of the universe. Okay. All right, now I'll, the reason I'm turning here, I want you to hear this about Gemini. Mercury and Venus were in the same degree of Gemini on, in the 11th house. It was easy to predict twins, a boy and a girl. Mercury is in Gemini, masculine, while Venus furnished the feminine indication. Okay. How, how we know, again, that this concept of these two beings represent the idea of twin and two types of people are based upon two factors of, or types of energy, one masculine and one feminine. <clears throat> In most depictions of Gemini, it is usually given two male children or two children, and it is assumed that both the children are boys or both are girls when they are not because they represent the positive and negative aspects of the cerebral spinal systems, the sympathetic and the autonomous nervous system. One that allows us to view the third dimensional reality that gives us contact with the third dimensional reality, the autonomous nervous system. The other, the sympathetic nervous system, allows the soul to cognize and intellect the third, fourth, and other dimensions, which allows our spiritual nature to work through our physical nature in relationship to the spiritual realms. That is the duality in its cosmogony of Gemini and, and this particular uh, uh, allegorical story of Levi and Simon or Simeon, okay? Okay, Mercury being uh, the, the planet of Gemini, okay? Masculine. Venus being the planet of the feminine aspect of nature.